what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be the spoiler free review for black panther wakanda forever black panther wakanda forever follows the kingdom of wakanda fighting to protect their nation from intervening world powers in the wake of king t'challa's death as the wakandans try strive to embrace their next chapter the heroes must band together with the help of war dog nakia and everett ross and forge a new path for the kingdom of wakanda now of course this is directed by ryan coogler who also co-wrote the, the screenplay for this latest sequel um, in addition to the mcu end of phase four i believe it was as well we know it stars leticia wright lupita ninyango winston dukes uh, angela bassett and some other individuals that I'll of course mention as I'm going through this review. First and foremost, I want to say that I believe that the 2018 Black Panther film is far superior. Ryan Coogler is also someone who I would say is a great director that has proven his talent, but this movie is lacking something to me. And I feel like what my biggest biggest issues were was how long it was and just pacing. And the low moments where it felt like you know certain things could have gotten more attention than others really comes down to just a pacing problem for me wakanda forever it's a suitable film that honors chadwick in the best way but i just knew something would be off the minute this film had one of the most abrupt starts to a to a mcu project i have ever seen or at least in recent memory legitimately it came off like a chunk of the movie was missing until the opening signature marvel sequence kicked in and it did not help that during my early screening there was actually a projector problem so me and many others thought that we had missed a chunk of the movie but we didn't that's how abrupt the beginning is now I can understand how the loss of Chadwick impacted this project and again this isn't a bad movie I do want to get that out of the way also I don't think I mentioned this I did like the movie and it's not bad it just has it's lacking it's just lacking so it's again I understand how that loss of Chadwick might have impacted it but it's felt throughout the pro this movie in a good and some bad ways thankfully angela bassett leticia wright winston dukes and everyone else are just kicking it up in terms of their performances coogler and cole have crafted a slow burn that takes some time to find its footing but it's always keeping you engaged with the arcs given to its core group of characters that it's centered on in this sequel now this probably comes as no shock to anyone but shuri and ramonda have the most emotionally charged material to work with and it pays off when the intensity kicks in during the film's second half the first half is a bit of a chore to sit through i'm not even gonna lie there but at least you can have some some likable characters and a very visually stunning production design to keep you interested and distracted uh now shuri again is the standout for character development angela bassett is going to be taking it for me in regards to superior performance her delivery during certain scenes is perhaps the only time i felt emotional because it's done in such a way to let the viewer feel the pain of ramonda uh also i know some people might be going in this movie expecting to cry I was not going into this movie expecting to cry, but some people who were going into it expecting to cry, you probably will be disappointed. Other characters outside of the core core characters that are pushing the narrative forward, they're pretty one dimensional, but that's to be expected when your film is stacked like this. Wakanda Forever also retains the themes of race and identity and uses it to introduce one of the MCU's best villain, best villains with Namor, who was portrayed brilliantly by Tanaka Huerta. The themes of grief and coping with loss are used to perfection as well as it pertains to what Shuri goes through, her journey throughout the movie. Lachisha Wright, I would say, gets to shine here. She really gets to shine here with some of the material she's giving. And she has some very moving moment moving moments that uh the character of Shuri participates in that she just will have you completely hooked and engaged because of what she's doing in the role at the time of these uh scenes that go on. Now, Namar's arc, one of the biggest strong one of the strongest writing components for me was Namar's arc challenging Shuri's journey and her grief process. That was just a very compelling inclusion that makes their battles much more personal than i would say the ones you have between t'challa and killmonger during that original movie of course also wakanda forever again like mentioned earlier it's a visually striking film that checks off all the boxes in terms of the cinematography if i had to again highlight the biggest issue i'd say that would be the bloated runtime and the pacing the third act can feel underwhelming because it lacks the intensity and stakes that were set up so well in the second part 
uh, it, during an earlier attack on Wakanda midway through the movie, the runtime really is going to be felt for sure. And it's going to turn some people off. And that's not to say it's squandering the time that it has. But like I mentioned, certain events could have been longer than others. I will commend the film for not being a carnage highlight reel like Black Adam. But instead, it decides to spend time with its characters to get you invested. Then it thrusts them into these thrilling action sequences that can feel more that can feel more engaged that you will feel more engaged in due to the prior setup involved wakanda forever again i'm not gonna say it's a bad movie it's a movie that as i watch it i'll say okay it's superior maybe in terms of every other filmmaking component outside of the writing i would say that the screenplay for that original movie is why i would still find the 2018 movie to be more suitable and more superior in terms of what this one is offering i love the way it explores grief i love the way it explores that in the grief process i love the, sh the, the journey of shuri and i like how everybody's performance really legitimately feels like it's being impacted by the fact that chadwick is not present uh may may his soul rest in peace because his presence not being in the movie it really just feels like something's missing and the whole movie again while you're watching this i won't be alone you can tell that they were shooting is like what it, it, it's like it, some things come off like what are we going to do are we doing this right they're doing it right and uh, there's more pros than cons but that runtime and pacing that was my biggest gripe just the runtime and the pacing some people might argue that they do not like what happens with shuri towards the end of the movie and the, and the trajectory of where her character goes all in all though i mean pretty much everyone knew they were going that route <laughs> I'm, I'm t i mean i'm this is a spoiler free review i don't know why i'm really dancing around it but i will <laughs> so in terms of again the action sequences and what you have to look forward to there they're very thrilling the choreography is is great uh the score is also something i, I want to commit i would say the score is a very 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 much an improvement over the original movie also the daytime shots in respect to the cinematography much more beautiful to look at in this movie compared to that that original film it's just that that first movie has a better story and i think the structure of the story is a lot better there as well this one seems to have some subplots that never really go anywhere when you're watching it and when it comes to how they set up certain things during that second act with namor and shuri then you get to the, the conclusion and it's like that's all <laughs> like really if i'm gonna give it out of 10 say a 7 7 out of 10 if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video